What's going on guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews and today I've got a really special one for you. This whole video is gonna be dedicated to identifying the markings on Luftwaffe day fighters from World War II. So if you've ever seen a picture of a BF-109 or an FW-190 or you're picking up a new scale model kit and you're not sure what all the decals mean, this video is for you. If you spend the next 10 minutes with me, hopefully you're gonna be able to walk away, see a picture of a BF-109 or an ME-262 and say, I know exactly what unit that belongs to. All right, everybody. Before we begin to identify markings on individual aircraft, we first need to discuss the basic organizational elements that made up a fighter wing within the Luftwaffe. At the tactical level, the fighter wing, or Jagdgeschwader, was the largest autonomous day fighter unit and was usually composed of roughly 160 aircraft broken out into smaller organizational elements. Within each fighter wing, there were various fighter groups, or gruppa, consisting of about 40 aircraft each. These were subordinated to the fighter wing, but had their own command staff. And lastly, each group was made up of various squadrons or staffel containing about a dozen aircraft apiece. In each fighter wing, the wing commander had his own command flight or stabschwam, consisting of four other officers, including the commander's adjutant, who was second in command, a chief of operations, and a staff major, who was responsible for maintaining the command company. Below that, each group had its own command flight of four officers, including the group commander, his adjutant, a technical officer responsible for maintenance of the group's aircraft, and another staff officer. The group then had its three squadrons of 12 fighters apiece. Each fighter wing usually had three or four groups, though sometimes additional groups could be attached to the unit. These groups were identified by Roman numerals 1, 2, 3, and 4. Stoffel within the fighter wing were noted in Arabic numerals as needed, with Stoffels 1, 2, and 3 subordinated to group 1, 4, 5, and 6 subordinated to group 2, and so on and so forth. Now moving on to aircraft markings. We'll start with the wing commander's Stabschwam, or command flight. Like most things in life, the marking structure followed a certain set of rules, but was often subject to variation between different fighter wings. As such, wing commanders often had slightly different identifiers on their personal aircraft. The most common markings to denote the wing commander's aircraft included a double chevron with a vertical bar. For this video, the German national insignia painted on the side of all fighter aircraft will be represented by the white cross you see here. Another common identifier for the wing commander's aircraft was a double chevron with a horizontal bar. An example of this was Johannes Steinhoff's mount when he was in charge of JG-77 in Italy. In addition, you might see a single chevron with two horizontal bars, one before and one after the national insignia. An example here includes Adolf Gallant's aircraft from his time as wing commander of JG-26. And finally, sometimes the wing commander would just have a horizontal arrow and a horizontal bar on either side of the national insignia. The wing commander's adjutant carried a single chevron and a vertical bar on his aircraft. The aircraft of the chief operations officer had a single chevron and a horizontal bar. And then the staff major had a single chevron and two vertical bars on his aircraft. At the group level, the group commander's aircraft would usually be adorned with a double chevron before the national insignia. Also important to note, some aircraft with that double chevron would have the second chevron stylized as a forward triangle instead. His adjutant would have a single chevron. And the group's technical officer would have a single chevron, a vertical bar, and an open circle after the national insignia. Markings on all wing level and group level aircraft belonging to officers in the leadership would be painted in black with a white border or white with a black border, depending on the camouflage scheme that was being used at the time. Now, each group within a fighter wing would have a special marking aft of the national insignia to help denote which group an aircraft belonged to. In group one, however, there would be no extra symbol. In group two, each aircraft would be adorned with a horizontal bar aft of the national insignia. Group 3 would either have a squiggle or a vertical bar. This differed between individual fighter wings, but both denoted that the aircraft belonged to Group 3. And finally, aircraft in Group 4 would either have a dot, a smaller cross, or a half squiggle. This also varied between individual fighter wings. Now, let's practice that a little bit. 
We can see on this BF109G on the left here, even though it's a little obscured by the ground crew and the wing, that it has a double chevron, which should tell us that this is the mount of a group commander. We can also see a horizontal bar aft of the national insignia, telling us that this plane belongs to Group 2. We can comfortably say then that this aircraft belongs to the group commander of Group 2 within this individual fighter wing. If we look at our FW-190 on the right here, we see a single chevron before the insignia, which tells us that this aircraft belongs to the group's adjutant. We also see a vertical bar after the insignia, which should tell us that the aircraft belongs to third group within this fighter wing. It's pretty easy so far, right? Well, it's about to get a little more complicated, so stay with me here. Let's move on to the Stoffel level. Each Stoffel Capitan in charge of the Stoffel would have his own aircraft denoted with a number 1. The remaining aircraft would be thus numbered, 1 through 12, for example, if the squadron had 12 aircraft, usually in order of seniority and experience. Within each group, a color coding system was developed to help identify each individual Stoffel within that group and within the entire Jagdrashvata. In Group 1, Stoffel 1, the Stoffel commander would just have a white 1 on his aircraft, no extra symbols. In Stoffel 2, the squad leader would have either a red 1 or a black 1, and no additional symbols. In Stoffel 3, the leader would have a yellow 1. Now if we move over to our second group, the Stoffel 4 leader, which is the first Stoffel in the group, has a white 1 and a white horizontal bar after the national insignia. The Stoffel 5 leader has a red or a black 1 with a red or black horizontal bar. And the Stoffel 6 commander has a yellow 1 and a yellow horizontal bar. Are you starting to see the trend here? So the first Stoffel within each group is going to have white markings. The second is going to have red or black markings, and the third is going to have yellow markings. This pattern is going to continue through all of the groups within the Yagdashvata, so in theory, when combined, the symbol aft of the national insignia and the color of the markings will tell you exactly which staffel, and accordingly which grupa, an aircraft belongs to. So let's do a little more practice. This Gustav on the left bears a black 12, which tells us that it's the 12th aircraft within its squadron. The fact that the number is black also tells us that this aircraft has to belong to the second squadron within its group, meaning that it's either a member of Stoffel 2, Stoffel 5, Stoffel 8, or Stoffel 11. If we look towards the tail, we can see a horizontal black bar, which lets us know that the aircraft also belongs to the second group of this fighter wing, confirming that the aircraft is a member of Stoffel 5, Group 2, within its wing. If we check out the FW-190, we immediately see a red 1, telling us that this is a Stoffel Capitan. The number being red means that he also has to be in charge of either the 2nd, the 5th, the 8th, or the 11th Stoffel in his group. If we look at the tail, we see a horizontal red bar, confirming that this aircraft is in Group 2, and therefore must also be in Stoffel 5. Interestingly enough, these aircraft are from different wings, but they are both in Group 2 Stoffel 5 of their respective units. Now, you may have noticed that we haven't discussed individual Jagdashvata identification yet, and that's because it's actually the most complicated part of this whole system. Within the day fighters, there wasn't any overreaching Luftwaffe-wide system for identifying fighter wings. The men did adopt unique emblems, however, at various levels across the organization. For example, aircraft from Jagdrashvata 77, or JG-77, were usually adorned with a red heart within a white diamond and referred to as the Ace of Hearts wing. You can see an example here on the left. Wings could also be ceremoniously named after individuals. JG-26 became the Schlageter wing, named after a World War I veteran and adorned with a stylized S emblem, as visible here on Galan's aircraft in the center. Things get more confusing, however, because emblems often varied within an individual Jagdrashvata. Sometimes each group would have its own emblem, and sometimes even individual Stoffel had unique emblems. This example here on the right shows the Berlin Bear of 2nd Group JG-27. Since there's not a systematic approach to this emblem assignment, I won't cover them all in detail here. Some units like JG-53, the Ace of Spades wing, or JG-54, the Greenhearts wing, 
are easily recognizable and have a considerable reputation, but many others are rather obscure. If you spend enough time modeling these aircraft or reading about them, you'll start to get a grasp of all the emblems on your own time. There are tons of great resources online. If you just Google Luftwaffe fighter emblems, you can get a big chart broken out by Jagdashvata and group, and it's super helpful to have, so go check one of those out. One last point to note, which can also be helpful in identifying Jagdashvata, is color bands. Prior to 1944, fighter aircraft operating on several fronts were adorned with a white band just before the tail. These included fighter aircraft operating in North Africa, in the Mediterranean, on the Russian front, and in Scandinavia. This basic marketing was expanded in 1944 as the Allied bomber streams forced more and more fighter units back into Germany. Special colored bands denoting Jagdschwada were painted just before the tail to help identify aircraft within the German defense network. The 109, pictured on the right here, is a member of JG-27, as denoted by its green tail band, as well as the emblem of first group JG-27 on the cowling. All right, so before we wrap up today, let's review what we've learned and see if we can identify a couple of examples. If you want to pause the video now and see if you can figure it out, give it a go and then we'll see how you did. This BF-109E has a single chevron, which first of all lets us know that it belongs to the group's adjutant. It also has a horizontal bar behind the tail, which tells us that he serves in second group. Now, as a bonus here, if we look at the engine cowling over on the grass, we can see the Ace of Spades emblem, which lets us know that this aircraft belongs to JG-53. So to identify this aircraft's unit, we would write the Roman numeral 2 for second group and JG-53. We'll do one more here, so pause if you want to try and figure it out on your own, and then come back and see how you did. First off, we see a white 10, telling us that this is the 10th aircraft in the Stoffel. It's also white, so we know that the plane must be in the first, fourth, seventh, or tenth Stoffel within this group. There is a squiggle behind the national insignia, which confirms that this aircraft indeed comes from third group, so it must be in Stoffel 7. Now, there's no insignia visible on the cowling of this aircraft, but judging by the setting, we can infer that it's in Africa. JG-27, or Jagdschwader 27, was stationed in Africa for much of the war, so it's safe to say that this aircraft might be from JG-27. So to write that out, we can either say generally that the aircraft comes from 3 JG-27, or 3 Roman numeral JG-27, or we can specifically say that it's from the 7th Stoffel by writing 7 and JG-27. Alright guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. It's super helpful to support the channel. If you want to subscribe for more content just like this, I try to post something about once a week. Until next time, happy building, be well, cheers.